Great, thanks, Terry. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining this session today. So my name is Greg Stacknick, and um, I am Director of Product Management here at GridGain. Um, I'm responsible for uh, our uh, cloud initiatives as well as development tools. Um, and today we'll be talking about um, some new things that, have, that were recently introduced in uh, Apache Ignite 2.9 and have been in uh, GridGain 8.7. Um, and that is uh, basically how we can use um, application tracing to debug our applications and look for uh, performance issues. So generally the agenda we'll follow today, um, I'll give you a brief overview of what is uh, grid gain and Apache Ignite. You've probably, you know, since this is getting toward the end of day one, you've probably heard this a few times. Um, and then we'll get into you know, why is application tracing useful, especially in distributed systems. Um, and then we'll get into some specifics about how tracing has been implemented um, in grid gain and Ignite, how we set it up. Um, and then we'll look at um, a use case of essentially debugging a slow running transaction um, using grid gain control center and um, collecting application traces and looking for like slow API calls basically. And then we'll look at ways we can uh, debug and resolve it. Um, so that's the general kind of flow. Um, so we'll talk about, uh, give some overviews. We'll talk about why tracing is cool. And then we'll go into some demos and, and look at some stuff in real time. All right, so um, let's just, you've probably seen this uh, throughout the, the day already, uh, or maybe even in the training session yesterday. Um, but just to reiterate, um, Apache Ignite, is a memory-centric data platform that's used to build fast and scalable and resilient solutions. Um, it's used to provide speed and scale to new and existing um, applications. Um, and Apache Ignite is the open source core. And then um, built on top of it, we have some enterprise features uh, that we provide with GridGain. Um, some of the common use cases or features of why you might be um, looking at Apache Ignite is that it provides distributed um, memory-centric storage, um, which allows us to store giant sets of data in memory, so we can take advantage of the speed of memory. Um, it gives us the ability to do co-located compute, so we can bring the, uh, the computations um, to the servers where that data actually resides, uh, eliminating some network bottlenecks. Um, and in terms of um, how we can interact with the data, um, there's a few different methods. Uh, one is through SQL, which is pretty popular because a lot of folks that are using Apache Ignite are coming from a relational database background. So SQL is very natural for them and we can just um, use SQL, uh, normal SQL syntax to query our data across all of the data that's in this distributed grid. Uh, and other options are um, key value. And uh, then this is also um, you know, ACID transaction um, compliant. Um, and so layered on top of um, Apache Ignite, um, we provide grid gain. And grid gain takes all of those kind of com common use cases and then adds some additional enterprise type features. Um, that includes things like uh, management and monitoring, um, uh, more advanced uh, security and auditing. Um, it gives you the ability to do zero downtime rolling upgrades, um, uh, gives you some tools to help you um, copy your data or um, replicate your data across multiple clusters or multiple regions. Um, and then there's a whole new um, host of additional features around persistence, allowing you to take this in-memory cache and through persistence um, really turn it into an in-memory database. Um, and that's used um, for uh, multiple ways, um, but one uh, uh, another way that we use persistence is to take um, snapshots or backups of the data that's in memory. So that's a quick overview of what is um, Ignite and kind of the differences between Ignite and GridGain. Um, let's see, there's a, one thing I forgot to mention is um, the client technologies. So there's a number of different supported client technologies um, from a number of different languages. So once you have your data, um, in your clusters. Uh, you can use um, clients that are built around .NET, um, C++, PHP, of course Java, REST, um, so many different types of ways to access that data using the technologies that you're most comfortable with. 
So why would we want to look at tracing? Um, so, you know, typically when you think about how we would debug um, a monolith, monolithic application, um, what do we typically do? Um, we'll probably look at log files. We might pull um, thread dumps. Uh, if it's a Java-based application, maybe we're pulling in um, data coming from like Java Flight Recorder or something like that. Um, but as you break up this monolith into uh, microservices, or if you're working with a distributed um, system like uh, this, a clustered environment that Apache Ignite gives you, um, as API calls are executing, or as your functions are executing across the cluster, it's going from you know, one node, it might perform some sort of API call, it may go to another node to um, get some more data, um, the query might require it to go you know, to a third node, a fourth node, a fifth node. So as your APIs are executing, it could be transactions, it could be you know, compute operations, it could be a query, um, it's, it's much harder to follow the execution around the cluster. Typically what you would do before we in instrumented um, tracing in Ignite is you would pull individual logs from your nodes, um, line up your timestamps um, on those individual logs, maybe pull the thread dumps from those individual nodes, and then maybe depending on your log rotation, you know, some of your logs might become stale and you, know, you might be missing a, a key important piece of information from an individual node. Um, and so tracing it just gives us another way of getting information from our clusters so that we can identify problems or so that we can um, accelerate our root cause analysis. Um, so it's really just an, a kind of another tool in the toolbox. Um, I tend to think of um, you know, the application traces as giving us a better context of the AP, an individual API as it's executing. So, you know, if you think about like the logs that are coming from an individual node, that's everything that's happening in that node, you know, kind of time sequenced. Um, but if you're having like a transaction, say, a transaction might be you know, accessing some data on one node and then maybe writing some data on another node and doing another lookup on another node, um, you know, following the, the execution across the cluster um, can be more difficult. So we'll show you some really cool things that we've added in Ignite and in GridGain to make that much, much easier. And so there's a number of different um, standards, or at least re there's really two or three standards um, in the open source community for how you can instrument tracing easily. Um, so there's, originally there were kind of two competing standards. One was, uh, one is open census, and um, one is open tracing. And uh, one project I believe was backed more by Google and one was backed more by Uber. Um, and now those two efforts have sort of combined under um, a single project called OpenTelemetry. Um, within Apache Ignite and GridGain, um, we currently support the open census style of a span collection. Um, and so what is open census? It's a set of libraries for um, various languages that you um, allow you to collect application metrics um, and distributed traces, and then transfer that data um, to a backend of your choice. And the data is usually analyzed by like developers or admins um, to try and understand the health of your application. Um, and a lot of the popular languages and frameworks have already instrumented their, um, their products for, to, to produce traces. Um, and you can actually very easily extend um, span collection or tracing instrumentation on your own custom code. So that if you're using a tracing tool, um, you can gather traces from say, you know, Java, the JDK, Java EE, maybe Spring Boot, and then also your custom code. Um, so that as the API is flowing from like the core language and into your application, you don't lose any of that, any of that data. Um, there's many uh, common monitoring tools um, that support open census and open tracing um, based spans. So that includes um, Datadog, um, uh, Splunk, um, GridGain Control Center, 
so a number of them. And I'll be showing you a demo of collecting traces within Grid Gain Control Center um, at the end. So um, the first uh, release of um, instrumentation for tracing um, appeared in Grid Gain 8.7 um, around the end of last year, I would say. Um, and so that initially includes um, included some um, instrumentation around discovery, around exchange, and around communication. So when a node is joining or leaving or, ex or maybe going through like a partition map exchange um, of its data, uh, we, would, we could collect and we could enable span collection and analyze um, the, de the details. And we've just been um, basically methodically instrumenting the rest of Ignite and Grid Gain for the other APIs. So um, after kind of the more like connection oriented APIs, we added um, support for transactions tracing. And then most recently over the last um, few weeks, we added support for um, cash read and cash write. So more things that you can kind of tap into and analyze. Um, and so what is the anatomy of a trace? Like I talk about a trace um, and what a trace is, is it's a collection of what we call spans. Um, and so an individual span uh, is uh, what we, which is, um, think of it like a unit of work. And that unit of work has some very specific data attached to it. So it includes something like the name of the API that was called, um, the node ID of where that API executed, um, the start time and the duration of that API. So that gives you a sense of um, how long that individual step took to execute. Um, it will give you maybe some information about the status, like did it complete successfully or did it end in a failure? Um, and if it ended in a failure, then we might collect the stack trace for that specific API call. Um, and then also sometimes we will also be able to pull in the logs. Um, related to that API call from that node. So it's a lot of information that you're able to get um, that's very that's within the context of that API call. Um, and then um, with those spans, um, we basically just collect all of that span data, match up the timestamps, and then give you um, the, the full execution stack. Um, and that's how most tools that um, support tracing work. They collect the different span data, they, co they combine it together, and then it gives you the full kind of trace. Um, so Grid Gain Control Center, Jagger, Zipkin, um, I believe Datadog, so uh, quite a few um, tools, third-party tools, open source tools, will kind of take that similar approach. Now, how it's useful um, in, in a distributed system is it makes it a lot easier to identify slow running processes because you can see each step and how long each step took and then you can just um, drill down into the details of that individual step it'll give you you know stack trace information so you can go and look at the code um, and, and those kinds of things so how do we enable tracing in grid gain and ignite well first uh, you need to be aware that there is a minimum version requirement in order to set up tracing. Um, so in grid gain, it's the 8.7 releases. I can't remember what the first release was. It might have been like 8.7.18 or something like that. But the latest versions of grid gain, whether it's community edition, enterprise edition, ultimate edition, they all have tracing. And then the first release of Ignite is that where tracing is available is 2.9, which just came out. Um, so a few different steps you need to do to get things started. One, we need to make sure that we have the Open Census libraries on our class path. By default, um, at least on the Ignite side, they are shipped in the optional libs directory. So you'll need to move those from your libs optional into your libs. Um, and so Open Census, it's, I believe it's a folder, it's a collection of different jars. Um, so you need to make sure that's on the class path. Once you put that on the class path, you, will, you would need to restart your cluster. Um, the next step that you need, need to do is um, you'll need to make sure that your um, cache configuration file has the tracing um, SPI added to it. And um, so here's the, the specific example. Um, in our documentation, um, we have you know, sample, app, um, sample configurations that show you what you need to do. But it's basically you're going to add Open Census Tracing, tracing API to your configuration. 
So the library is in the class path, your, your um, cache config or your, your um, cluster config is updated with the SPI, um, and then you launch your cluster. Um, and then we need to decide which of the different APIs available to us we want to start collecting from. And that's done from our um, command line script, so control sh. So you call control sh and then specify you know, which API you want to collect traces from. So um, you see here, I have an example. Um, so we decide on the scope, that's the name of the API, and it could be a common delimited list. So it can be, you know, if you want to collect traces on discovery, or on uh, transactions or exchange or communication. Um, you can set all of that up through uh, by a call to control sh. And then the last thing you would need to do if you're going to enable this through control sh is decide on the sampling rate. So the sampling rate is a number between zero and one. It basically represents the percentage of those API calls that you want to collect spans from. So if you say one, you're going to be collecting Every time, every call to say in this example, discovery. So every time a node, you know, tries to join your cluster, you'll be collecting a span from it, and 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 the whole the stack, the the whole trace. Um, so generally, you wouldn't do like a hundred percent sampling rate. You might do something much lower, maybe like thirty percent or something. Um, and the nice thing about being able to specify um, this uh, scope and the sampling rate is um, you can do that at runtime. And you can just call into the control SH and change the sampling rate or turn off tracing so that you know, if you're running into some issues, um, you can selectively enable tracing on the cluster without having to restart it. And then once you've collected your traces and you've done your analysis, you can turn it off. Um, if you're working with um, Grid Again Control Center, um, we can, we, we'll make those calls um, Kind of behind the scenes to um, the control sh so you don't have to go into command line um, you can make all of these changes just from a ui um, let's see so those are kind of the steps so just to review you move the library if you're using ignite you need to add the class uh, your open census tracing api to your configuration file um, and then you need to basically make a call into control sh and decide how you you know which apis you want to collect from and the sampling rate and then once, once you're done with that, you're off to the races and um, the span data will start collecting um, in the individual node um, directories. And then you can point your tracing tool of choice at your cluster and then start to work with those spans. Um, so I'll be showing you a demo of um, kind of how we can interact and um, analyze traces um, through Grid Gain Control Center. So let me just give you a little bit of overview about our tool um, so that you can understand kind of what it does um, and how it relates uh, to, to tracing. Um, so Grid Gain Control Center is a, um, it's a development tool and monitoring tool um, for Grid Gain and Apache Ignite um, projects. Um, and it's basically providing us with uh, quite a bit of different types of functionality. Um, so in addition to tracing, um, it gives us the ability to um, monitor metrics and build custom dashboards. Um, another thing that's interesting about our use of open census in Ignite and GridGain is the other side of open census, um, the one side is tracing, and the other side is around metrics. And we've also instrumented Ignite to produce open census-based metrics as well. Um, that should make it more convenient for you um, to use third-party tools that are open census compliant to view your metrics. Um, so you know, typically in the past, if you were using a third-party tool to view metrics, you might be pulling in um, individual JMX metrics, um, but now you have two choices. You can um, basically connect uh, using um, your open census exporter of choice and um, you know, load those open census-based metrics into your tool. Um, so it should make it a little bit easier to find the metric of choice, um, or you can still just use the you know, original JMX metrics, those have not changed. Um, so metrics is another, is, a, is kind of one thing. Um, so the ability to kind of um, monitor the progress or the status of the cluster and its nodes. Um, 
Control Center also gives you uh, the ability to build alerts, custom alerts around the, those, um, those metrics, um, and then some development tools as well that we'll talk about in a moment. Um, so with respect to tracing and um, Ignite and grid gain, um, Control Center is set up out of the box to be able to pull um, all of the spans and construct them into the full, trace, the full traces um, without any additional um, configuration besides adding the SPI to your um, config and making sure that tracing is on your, um, on your class path. Um, and then once we start collecting those traces, um, you know, we start to expose all of that span data that has been um, built into the tracing instrumentation of Ignite. Um, let's see, so in addition, so I mentioned um, we also have support for kind of dashboards. So this is basically visualizing the cluster status, giving you a bunch of different um, uh, kind of data visualization widgets. Um, so you can pick the metric of your choice. There's um, over 200 um, open census based uh, metrics that you can um, build custom dashboards around. Um, and we provide some defaults to help you get started. Um, and these range from CPU to heat to garbage collection to threading to transactions, all different types of things. Um, so in addition to viewing the status of metrics in real time through dashboards, we can also build alerts around those metrics so that if there are specific metric thresholds, say, you know, around maybe heap usage or uh, GC pauses or CPU usage of individual nodes, uh, we can define some rules um, and then the, the, the tool will then monitor for um, basically whether those conditions are violated. And then we have a, a number of different notification options, including SMS and email, writing to an API, um, showing up uh, of um, an alert within, this, within the UI itself, um, things like that. Um, we won't get into this today, um, but in addition to kind of the monitoring tools, the debugging tools, um, Control Center also includes query tools. So um, if you're coming into Ignite, you probably have a, there's a high, high likelihood that you might have um, a SQL background. Um, so we provide a full SQL IDE that allows you to you know, build up your queries, execute them, view the you know, ER um, diagram, uh, you know, do advanced settings. Um, Analyze running queries if they're if they're you know performing slowly. Look at the statistics of how the queries are executing, uh, and then also get into the internal in, uh, implementation of the query as it's um, as it the, after it is executed through like explain plans and things like that. Um, as the cluster is adding and removing nodes, or if you're doing any kind of upgrades. Um, we provide some visualizations for uh, rebalancing. So as a as a, a node exits or enters um, your cluster, if you're you know configuring your cluster to um, copy the data across your different nodes, so that you have multiple copies, um, that tends to you know trigger a rebalance event. Um, we found that in our past tools that it was a little um, like maybe opaque or, or not that clear what's happening during rebalance. So now we've provided some additional details and visualizations so that you can see kind of which nodes are being rebalanced and, and then drill down to an individual node if something is, you know, look like, it looks like it's taking a long time or something like that. Um, and then for the grid gain additions, um, grid gain ultimate edition, we provide um, tools around snapshotting. So that's using our grid gain persistence. Um, and this allows you to, um, you know, basically take a snapshot of your cluster and caches, cache data, um, and you can do full snapshots, incremental snapshots, um, you know, check the snap, check the data integrity to make sure it hasn't been corrupted, um, roll back to an older um, backup, all of those types of things um, we make available um, through a UI. Traditionally, we also have um, a CLI interface, so this is um, just giving you another way to work with snapshots in addition to the Kind of traditional CLI. Um, so how do we get started um, with uh, Control Center and Ignite or Grid Gain? Um, it's pretty basic. Um, you know, for one, uh, you can if you want to. Uh, so we have a couple of diff different distributions. Um, we have a hosted version of Control Center that's free. 
um, and you can connect your Ignite um, clusters or your GridGen clusters to it and immediately get access to monitoring and the development tools and, and the whole functionality that I've that I mentioned already. Um, in order to um, for your cluster or your nodes to communicate to the tool, you'll need to um, add an agent um, to your class path. Um, so if you're coming from GridGen, we ship the agent by default. You just need to make sure it, that it's moved from the optional libs into the libs directory. Um, if you're coming from Ignite, you'll want to go and um, download that agent either from um, gridgain.com or um, from, from Maven, just from our um, uh, centralized Maven repository. Um, and then once um, the agent is on the class path, then you'll have um, basically a connection token that you'll um, provide to Control Center and that will facilitate the handshake um, between the cluster and the monitoring and start to send the metrics um, to, to your tool. Um, one thing to be aware of is that um, the agent, it's a best practice for the agent to run not on just one node, but on all of the nodes in your cluster. Um, that way um, you'll be able to collect all of the metrics from each cluster. And if for some reason an individual node goes down and that node um, was kind of acting as the active agent, um, tends the active agent tends to sit on your coordinator node um, then the next node that gets promoted to coordinator also becomes the active agent so you lose none of your um, monitoring it basically automatically promotes um, um, and sends metrics to the to a control center as long as you have at least one node running um, so it's pretty basic it's just um, making sure that the the agent is on the class path and then grabbing the cluster id or the the token id Okay, so let's um, do a little demo. Um, so I'm gonna be running um, a local version of uh, a, a cluster. Um, unfortunately, I'll, I, I'm actually gonna be using a grid gain edition, using community edition. Um, I wasn't able to get uh, an updated agent in time uh, for Apache Ignite 2.9. Um, that's something that we are working on right now. We should be releasing um, an updated agent um, you know, in the coming days or weeks. Um, so I've got a local cluster running um, it's a single node cluster with a, with a Java thick client. Um, and then I'm running Control Center locally as well. So let's switch to a browser. Okay, so here I am in uh, GridGen Control Center. I'm running locally. Uh, let me switch to a different mode just so the colors show a little better. Um, and so I can see here, I'm in the dashboard. So the dashboard is what we use um, for uh, understanding our metrics um, and building out um, you know, the, the list of metrics that we wanna work with. So I see here in my nodes table that I have, it's a two node cluster. Um, one is a server node and then a client node. I can see the version, the IP address, and I can see they're both online and they appear to be healthy. Um, some other things that we have here with these um, visualizations is um, I have a heat map that's showing my heap usage. Um, and I've kind of configured the threshold um, to a specific range so that if my heap usage gets above a specific point, um, we'll color code it appropriately, so from green to red. Um, I've got a table here that's showing my memory usage, um, my heap and off heap, uh, and then I have a couple of visualizations um, around graphs that's showing kind of my CPU usage and um, heap usage. So we see here that, um, you know, in my client node, um, we've got a little bit of variable um, load and then a little more load happening on our server node. Uh, and then I created some additional dashboards, um, so some information around um, transactions. Uh, and this is where um, some things we can see kind of get interesting. So I'm looking over the last three hours of my, of my um, transactions and I can see that I've got um, some of my transactions are happening really quickly and then a portion of these, um, this time on transactions is taking a long time. Similarly, um, the commit time on my transactions jumped quite a bit um, around uh, oh, maybe a couple hours ago. Uh, and it's been holding these, transa these individual transactions are now taking a real, um, this, this amount of time to complete. Uh, and then I'm also plotting kind of the, the kind of transactions um, as they're executing. Um, against my client node, so I can get a sense of the total number of commits that are happening over time. Um, you know, also I can create some additional dashboards. So, you know, if I wanted to add, um, you know, follow like the 
um, PME, the Permit Partition Map Exchange, or Rebalance, um, I can add additional um, tables and charts um, at, my, at my, you know, kind of at my pleasure. So here maybe we also want to look at something like, oh, threads. Add that chart. Maybe we'll maybe we'll reposition it a little bit and put it over here. So we can just continue to build. Um, you know, kind of pick different visualizations. Um, you know, browse through the list of metrics. The metrics are sorted by um, different scopes, so cluster, node, and cache level metrics. Uh, and then just build up these custom dashboards, and there's is, you know, as many, it's, it's as customizable as you need. Um, but the thing that's kind of interesting here is that we saw, you know, a little while ago that the, the the commit time is taking a lot longer than we would expect. It's actually taking very long. Um, and so let's see, maybe there's some alerts that we've um, set up. Well, let's see, I've uh, I've, I've set my threshold for um, commit time actually to be quite large, so it isn't actually triggering an alert yet. Um, so I could adjust my alerts so that um, you know, I, I'm getting you know, alerted when the transactions are taking quite long. Um, right now, I've just kind of set up some alerts around heap usage, um, so I can see that I am I have triggered an alert around like the memory usage on one of my nodes. Um, but let's kind of get into this a little bit more, like what's happening here. Um, and so let's take a look at tracing. So I'm going to switch over to the tracing tab. And what we'll do here is we'll pull in um, our individual traces. So we can see that I've got um, basically every couple of minutes I'm collecting a transaction trace. So I've already configured uh, my cluster to basically cr produce um, uh, transaction spans. And so we're collecting them. Uh, we can see that you know they've been pretty much taking a minute for a, a transaction to occur, but you know, a little while ago, like we saw in the graphs, they went from uh, 100 milliseconds to a minute. So something definitely changed, um, you know, a couple hours ago. Um, so let's get into the the details of one of these traces and see if we can figure out what it is. So we we can see that the API, so this that of where the trace started, it's in our transaction API within Ignite. We can see the start time, how long the total operation took, how many steps um, or or spans. Um, and then um, what is the name or what are the de some of the details? So we can see some information around um, its concurrency, whether it had configured any timeouts, um, what its isolation level was, um, but let's get to the details here. So I'm gonna click on this individual trace and that will give us some more information about the span. Um, so what are we seeing here? Well, we saw the time when the API call started, which was um, which is here. We saw the total duration that it took for this transaction to occur, um, and there was 22 different steps. And so now we can start to look at the span details. So this is the overall transaction um, ex occurrence. So it took you know, uh, over a minute to execute. And then as we expand this node, we can get a breakdown of when these um, different operations occurred. So we can see initially, in this transaction, we did a read, and it was in um, this node, so it's our client node. Um, and we can get some more information about the node ID, consistent ID, that could be helpful if we're trying to get um, maybe more information from individual logs or something like that. Um, and then we do a lock to um, perform that read. Uh, and we can see all of these are ticking really fast. They're like zero milliseconds, one millisecond, which is kind of what you would expect in a transaction. Um, especially, I'll, I'll show you the code in a moment. The transaction is very, very simple. Um, okay, and so we're still, now we're getting ready to do our write. And so we see it's still in our client node. Um, with its consistent ID, we can see it's also very, very fast, one millisecond. Um, and then right around here, we get this big jump, right around the time that we're trying to do our write. Um, and before the write actually occurs or completes. So it's somewhere in this, during this lock, when we're getting ready to start writing, it goes from 
you know, zero milliseconds, zero milliseconds, and then all of a sudden it jumps all the way over to the basically the end of that operation, and then everything else that 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 write actually completes, and the transaction closes, and it was committed. So something is happening around this write operation here, something in between these two steps. So let's go take a look at the code now. I'm going to switch over to my IDE. So I'm I'm using IntelliJ. Um, and so here I've got my client node, um, and I can see here that it's um, setting up uh, my Ignite um, cache, and I see that we start to put some def information into um, the cache. We get the cache, or no, we're going to get we're going to get the details of the cache, and then right before we're going to put the data into the cache and write it and commit it, I have a I have a, a wait. So, you know, we can see here that in between kind of the read and the put and the commit, we've got a problem here. I know this is a silly, this is a, a silly example, but it's giving us an idea of, you know, how we line up what's happening um, during this transaction and giving us kind of a sense of, you know, where we can start to make our investigation. So, you know, obviously I have this thing sleeping for a while, so I'm going to reduce that sleep. And what we should see is when I do a rebuild and I um, and I redeploy, um, we should see this starts to go much faster. Right, let me stop and let's just run this again. So while this is running, um, our server node still looks good. Um, it doesn't seem to be having any problems. We had enabled persistence on that server node. Um, we got a connect, the connection information to connect that server node um, to control center. Um, and now let's look at this transaction runner. Okay, so now we see the transactions are happening much quicker, like every couple of seconds or every second. Um, and so we should see this reflected in our um, traces as well. So let me go back. Um, into my traces, and what do I see? Okay, now I can see that things are moving much more quickly. They've gone from a minute to now I'm collecting a transaction every second. Now, one thing is to note is I actually have set my um, my sampling rate at 100%. Probably not something you would want to do, um, but I'm just doing it for demo purposes. So now when I go in here, I can see the total time that it's taking. Um, it's still, you know, it's showing, you know, we have this wait, this wait operation. So we expect somewhere in between, you know, when we're doing the right and we take the data and then we do the push, we knew, we do know there's going to be a, a space in time. Um, but now it's, you know, within the, the, the parameters that we've set in that, in that thread sleep. So what are we seeing here? We see that, you know, within Ignite, we've instrumented the, the product in order to collect um, trace information. So if you're working with transactions, if you're working with caches, if you're needing to debug um, kind of like discovery and communication, maybe a node um, crashed and dropped off of the cluster and you want to kind of get into the details of why that happened, um, you can selectively add tracing at runtime um, just by making sure that you have uh, tracing configured in your configuration file, the tracing um, libraries on your class path, and then enabling tracing from control SH or through a tool like Control Center. Uh, what we should also see is um, some differences in our um, in our law in our um, dashboards as well. And and we see that. So when I killed that client node, um, that client I'm not like enabling persistence. So it has um, a new node ID and consistent ID. So we see that the original client is now um, offline and dropped off, and we're starting to collect new data. Um, uh, we can see that you know this um, histogram of the transaction time has come in quite a bit. It's not in like the infinity range anymore. It's much quicker. Um, you know, by making that operation and moving things around and adding and removing a node, um, we see that rebalance is fine. Um, we did have a little bit of um, partition app exchange that happened. Um, but most importantly, what we're seeing is that 
um, the traces that we're collecting from that transaction are now going much faster. And by being able to dig into and drill down into the details of those spans, um, it gave us a hint as to where to look um, in our code. And also, you know, which node is the are the ones that are um, that are kind of participating in this in this API calls. In this case, everything is happening on that client node, so I wouldn't expect the node ID to change. Um, but you know, if you're running um, other types of operations, particularly you know, if you're doing anything with like Exchange, um, you might notice that the API calls are going from you know multiple nodes back and forth, and it makes it easy to follow. So that was kind of an introduction on you know, what is tracing, why is it useful, um, how was it instrumented, or which APIs are available in Apache Ignite 2.9 and GridGain 8.7. Um, I mean, then we, you know, just to summarize, we looked at a, a, you know, one tool, um, GridGain Control Center, which um, allows us to very easily collect that span data, construct it into the trace, and then drill down into the details. Um, if you're interested in Control Center, um, we have a few different um, distributions available. Um, we have a free version that you can just connect to on controlled.gridgain.com. Just go create an account, connect your cluster, and you'll get immediate access to everything that I've sh showed you and other things that I haven't showed you. So I didn't really show you about um, you know, building SQL statements, running them, you know, fine-tuning them, analyzing their performance, things like that. Um, but all of those tools are available for you, to you for free on control.gridgain.com. Um, and it's for Ignite um, 283, 282 and higher, and then grid gain 87 and higher. Um, and then we have downloadable versions. Um, so you can download um, either a zip or you can pull from um, our Docker Hub, um, grid gains Docker Hub, uh, and uh, get a local version of Control Center. Um, if you're doing local development with Control Center, we do have, um, for the downloadable versions, we do have a limit on the number of nodes, um, concurrent nodes that we can monitor. Um, and then uh, if you, uh, there is a commercial version that is basically node-based pricing that you can use to monitor you know, larger clusters and um, you know, production environments, things like that. Um, so let's open it up for questions. Let's see here. Oh, th okay, thanks, Greg. Um, if anyone has any questions, please enter them in the uh, questions panel in the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, there was a question about configurations, but I'm, I'm not sure what the uh, what the details were. So, uh, if uh, <clears throat> if you asked a question about configurations earlier and you'd like to restate that, uh, be happy to answer it. Uh, any other questions? Um, what uh, what information is required to, to register to use the online version, Greg? Oh yeah, easy. You just need to provide um, you know uh, an email address essentially. Um, so you'll create a username and password, um, and uh, and then you know basic registration information like typical registration information. Um, and from there, then you can um, create your account and uh, connect your clusters. And um, we do have a limitation where we um, we do. Uh, um, we do only keep um, metrics logs for uh, 24 hours on the free on the free online version, and we keep um, traces for uh, for a week. Um, so it's not unlimited um, data storage on the on the online version, um, but it's definitely enough for you to get started and start to play around and you know monitor your cluster and you know build your queries and stuff like that. Okay, and was this uh, was this partially um, also covered yesterday in the training session? It is, yeah. So Dennis took you on um, a much more thorough um, kind of tour of the of the tool, getting you into you know all of the different features, particularly around like building queries and setting up your dashboards and setting up your alerts, all that stuff. Um, this was much more focused on just the tracing aspect, and in particular, kind of like trying to debug a transaction. Yeah. Here's some additional links that you might find useful um, if you want more information about um, Control Center. Um, our webinars, our documentation. Um, if you're trying to get started with Ignite or GridGain or Control Center, um, I, I would encourage you to check out our developer portal. Um, there you can get documentation and tutorials. Um, this is some links to our doc site. Um, and then if you want to just sign up, you can go to control.gridgain.com. 
All right, Greg. that was it for me. <laughs> okay, thanks, Greg. Thanks, everybody. We'll, thanks, uh, everybody. The next sessions will start in about 15 minutes. Thank you. Bye.